Hey, answer this question for me. Why are sales professionals losing their jobs? Now, I understand during COVID, there are some companies that just didn't exist, right? No need for a sales force. Everything was shut down. It couldn't happen. But for those that were existing and that could still sell and still had a product and an audience, why are salespeople getting fired? Why are salespeople not meeting their numbers? Why, why is the performance down? I tell you why. Because you refuse to change your process. If you've been selling door to door for 10 years, five years, two years, however long it's been. When you move into a virtual space and you can no longer go knock on that door and see your customer, you have to change some things in your process. The number one thing that I've seen going wrong with sellers who are normally used to B2B, knocking on doors and not being able to do that now during COVID and moving forward because things have changed, right? I, 2021, new sales era, things have changed. Is selling with vulnerability. I've always shared with sales professionals that I'm mentoring that if you spend the time with the customer to build a rapport, when you leave the office, if you've forgotten anything, you can call that customer one, two, three times, and they're going to pick up that phone. They're going to say, oh yeah, that's Joyce, put her through. You know, and if you've done what you should have done by properly greeting the admin and talking with the admin person, they're going to be like, oh yeah, hi, Joyce. Okay, let me see if he's available. She's available. Yes, absolutely put you through. But for some reason, during the most stressful time in any individual's life, because remember, your customer is still a person, we can't seem to grasp the part of the sales process that we need to focus on the most, building the rapport. You may not have a conversation about the actual product information that you're selling, your first call, your second call, maybe not even your third call, but you are communicating about that information via email after those calls. And you know what? The customer's reading it. The customer's reading that because you led with vulnerability. You led with the importance of building a rapport. You led with the importance of checking in with that person to see how they were, how their family were, and the other things that was important to them. So yes, they read your email first. Yes, they may not have an answer for you when you call back. But afterwards, they're going to go and take a look at it and they will respond to you. But if we don't begin to lead with vulnerability and understand what that is, we're going to continue to lose business. We're going to continue to miss our numbers and underperform. We're going to continue to lose business. We're going to continue to miss our numbers and continue to underperform. I thought I need to say that again. We've got to learn to leave with vulnerability. And what does vulnerability look like? It doesn't mean that you have to share also. Sometimes vulnerability in most cases is listening listening to our customers. There is a reason and we have two ears. We say this all the time in sales. We have to listen to our customers. And if ever we've listened before, we have to really be attentive. We have to really hone into that because we are not in front of the customer to read their body language, but we can read the tones of their voice. We can know when someone is hurting and when someone is struggling. So if you're interested in meeting yourselves for this year, Leave with vulnerability. Want to keep your job? Get a new job? Get promoted? Leave with vulnerability. That's it. Let's talk about it.